Akaya Jaksur Militanjena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakalpata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're on chapter number 78 of the Krishna book and we're hearing about how Lord Balaram is visiting holy places. So Lord, Lord Balaram had come to Naimisharanya and Romaharshan, Romaharshan Sutta was sitting on an elevated seat but he did not give any respect to Lord Balaram. So Romaharshan Sutta was a disciple of Srila Vyasadeva and he had been given a lot of transcendental knowledge by the grace of Vyasadeva. And so the sages elected Romaharshan to speak to them and to guide them and to teach them the essence of the Vedas. So, when Lord Balaram had came into the assembly, everyone had given respect to Lord Balaram in one way or another. Everyone except Romaharshan. So usually the person who sits on the Vyasasana is not required to give respect to anybody. But in this case, it was the personality of Godhead, Lord Balaram coming. And it doesn't matter who they are, they're sitting on the Vyasasana. They have to give respect to the personality of Godhead. So Lord Balaram considered about the birth of Romaharshan and he remembered that the birth of Romaharshan was mixed. In other words, his mother was from a Brahmana family, but the father was from a Shatri family. So Lord Balaram saw also that Roma Harshan did not understand the highest principle of religion. He'd studied all the Vedas, but he didn't know what is the highest principle of religion. So Rumaharshan Sutta 
had been given the chance to become a perfect Brahmana. But he had behaved in a disrespectful way. He had behaved in a bad way in relating to Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram immediately remembered that this person's birth is not is not the highest, it's a low birth because he's a mixed Brahmana. So Ramaharshan had been given the position of a Brahmana, but he had not been born in the family of a Brahmana. He, he'd been born, his, his birth was in a family which is called Pratiloma family. It means that the mother is a, from a Brahmana family and the father is from a Kshatri family. Yeah, in the Vedic culture, there are two kinds of mixed family. One, 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 one type of mixed family is called Anuloma and the other is called Pratiloma. So if the male is married to a woman who is of a lower caste, then that is called Anuloma. But if the woman is of a higher caste, then that is called Pratiloma. Okay, and so uh and Sutta belonged to the Pratiloma family because his father his father was a Kshatri and his mother was from a Brahmana family. Mm. So because Romaharshan's Realization is he didn't. Ramaharshan didn't have perfect realization. So, so Lord Balaram remembered about his mixed birth, how his birth is a mixed birth, and the mother is higher than the father. So we should understand anybody can be given the chance to become a Brahmana. It said in the scriptures that just like bell metal can be made into gold by mixture of alchemical process. เหมือนกับที่ตรงนี้เนี่ยได้บอกไว้ 
bell metal. It's, it's a special metal. can be used to make gold. But you have to mix it with mercury. So the, the Vedas say, in the same way anybody can become a Brahmana, but they have to be properly initiated and trained by a bona fide spiritual master. So, the same way Rum Maharshan was given a chance to become a Brahmana, but he did not use it properly. He didn't have pro he didn't understand how to respect Lord Balaram. And so because he was not because he offended Lord Balaram, and so he was he lost his position as a Brahmana. So when Lord Balaram saw that this person, Romaharshan, is not properly educated, he's not pro he doesn't have proper understanding, Lord Balaram decided to remove him from that position. Lord Balaram decided this man has to be punished. And he said the proper punishment for this man is they should be killed. And Lord Balaram said he, 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 has good he has a good quality that he's a disciple of Srila Vyasadev. And he studied all the Vedas from Srila Vyasadev. But he was not submissive to Lord Balaram. When Lord Balaram came there, he did not respect him. So it's stated in the Bhagavad Gita that if a person is actually a Brahmana and he's actually learned, then he must be very gentle and humble. But Ramaharshan Sutta, he was very learned and he had been given the chance to become a Brahmana, but he had not become gentle. So from this we can understand that one who is proud, or puffed up by his material possessions, then it's going to cause problems. If somebody is proud of his material things, then he won't have the, the behavior, he won't behave like a gentle Brahmana, he won't be humble. Uh, 
So even though the person may be very learned, if he's not humble, if he doesn't have the good quality of, of being gentle, then it's not good. The person may be learned, but all of his knowledge is just like a jewel on the head of a snake. And so the, the snake may have a jewel on its head. And we may think, oh, there's a valuable jewel on the head of the snake. But the snake is very dangerous. So, when you see a snake with a jewel on it, you have to be careful. They don't bite you because they can kill you. So if a person doesn't become meek and humble, then all of his studies, everything he learned in the Vedas and the scriptures, it's all useless. All of his knowledge will just be like a dress, outward, just like a dress, like the costume of an actor on the stage. Yeah, just like somebody may be dancing on the stage, so they wear the dancing costume. But it's just a dress, it's not the real dress. So Lord Balaram thought to himself, he thought, I have come to this world in order to chastise, to punish these people who are, in, who are posing, who are actually impure, but externally appearing pure. Yeah, they, 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 they appear to be very learned because they have so much knowledge, but they're, they're actually f foolish. They don't know. They haven't got real knowledge. So Lord Balaram said, if I kill this person, it's actually good because it will stop other people from performing the same sinful activity. And it will stop Roma Harshan from doing sinful, any more sinful activity. So Lord Balaram had taken part, and Lord Balaram didn't want to take, he, 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 
he had not taken part in the battle of Kurukshetra. But because he's an incarnation of the Lord, he's come to re-establish religious principles. His, his most important duty was to re-establish the religious principles. So he decided that he should kill Roma Harshan. So he killed him in a very special way. He simply took a blade of kusha grass and he used the kusha grass to pierce the heart. So people may wonder, how is it possible you could kill someone just by hitting them with a piece of grass? But we have to, um, the, the word is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam, they use the word Prabhu, meaning master. And the Lord Balaram is the master. If he wants to do something, he can do it. So Lord Balaram is always transcendental and he's omnipotent. He has all different powers, so he can act any way he likes. And so he's not obliged to follow any material laws. So simply by taking a piece of grass, Lord Balaram pierced the heart of Romaharsha and he died. So when Lord Balaram killed Romaharshan, then the, all the sages there, they, they were disturbed and they cried out, Oh, oh, alas, oh. So all of the brahmanas, all the sages there, they all knew that Lord Balaram is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But they didn't, they, they, they were, they, 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 but still they protested about Lord Balaram's action. They were upset. So they humbly asked Lord Balaram, they requested Lord Balaram, they said, oh, my dear Lord Balaram, we think that your action is not in line with the religious principle. And then the Brahmanas told Lord Balaram, they said that we want to tell you that we we're Brahmanas and we had given Roma Harshan Sutta 
the position to sit on the Vyasasana and be given the blessings of a long life. We came here to Naimisharanya to do a sacrifice for a thousand years and we blessed Ramaharshan that he would be here for a thousand years. And we elected him to sit on the Vyasa It wasn't that he just came and sat on it himself. We chose him to sit there. So because he was sitting on the Vyasasan, he doesn't have he didn't have to stand up to greet anybody. And we've given Roma Harshan blessings that he would have undisturbed long life. So the sages said to Lord Balaram, now we understand you didn't know that we'd given these blessings to him and you killed him without knowing about it. So the sages said to Lord Balaram that they said, you, you've killed a Brahmana. And so they said, Dear Lord Balaram, we know you can deliver the fallen souls, and we know for certain that you are the knower of the Vedic principles. And you are the master of all mystic power. So the different injunctions, the different rules and regulations of the Vedas, they cannot be applied to you. So the sages said to Lord Balaram, we, we, we want to respect you, we res want, with respect we want to advise you to, to do something about this. We want you to show mercy to others by making an atonement for the killing of Ramaharsha. So we don't suggest what kind of thing, we don't suggest what kind of act you should do to atone for it. We simply suggest that you find some method to atone so that others will follow your example. Wow. 
คําแนะนําเฉยๆว่าปล้องเนี่ยควรที่จะทําการต้องเฉยกับสิ่งสิ่งในการสังหารโรมาชาไปในครั้งนี้ Whatever is done by a great personality like you then the common people they will follow your example ว่าสิ่งที่บุคลิกภาพผู้ยิ่งใหญ่อย่างท่านเนี่ยทำเป็นตัวอย่างมันก็จะทำให้บุคคลธรรมดาทั่วไปเนี่ยปฏิบัติตาม So Lord Balaram said yes I must do something to make up for my action พระองค์เจ้าบัลลังก์ก็บอกว่าได้แต่ฉันจะทำอะไรบางอย่างเพื่อเป็นการชดเชยการกระทำในครั้งนี้ที่ไม่เหมาะสมของฉัน What I did may have been all right for me but it's not good for ordinary people ว่าสิ่งที่ฉันได้กระทำไปในครั้งนี้เนี่ยมันอาจจะไม่ได้ผิดอะไรสำหรับฉันแต่ว่าอาจจะดูไม่ดูไม่เหมาะสมสำหรับคนอื่น So certainly my duty to do something to make up for it, what I've done. แล้วมันก็เป็นหน้าที่ของข้าในการที่จะต้องมานั่งทำกับสิ่งที่ข้าเนี่ยได้กระทำ And also, I can also give this Roma Harshans. If you want, Balaram said, Lord Balaram said, I can also bring Roma Harshans to the back to life again. And I can give him a long span of life. He can live a long time. And I'll give him full power of the senses. And Lord Balaram said, "If you want, I will be happy to award him." Anything else you may ask. And Lord Balaram said, "I'm ready to do whatever you want to satisfy all your desires." กับทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างที่พระเจ้าต้องการเพื่อให้พระเจ้าเนี่ยส่งประสงค์ So this shows that Lord Balaram can do whatever he likes. He's free because he's the supreme personality of Godhead. He can do whatever he likes. ตรงนี้เนี่ยแสดงให้เห็นว่าพระองค์เจ้าบาลามเนี่ยทรงเป็นองค์พระควานบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดเพราะฉะนั้นแล้วพระองค์เนี่ยจงทรงมีอิสระภาพในการที่จะทำอะไรก็ได้ So maybe we may think it was wrong of Lord Balaram to kill Roma Harshan Sutta. เราเราคิดว่ามันเป็นการผิดที่บาลามเนี่ยสังหาร Roma Harshan Sutta. But Lord Balaram said he could immediately counteract it. He could make up for it. So we should understand. We should not try to imitate the actions of Lord Balaram or, or Lord Krishna, because they're the supreme personality of Godhead. And so, we should understand. We should follow all the instructions of Krishna. So all of the great brahmanas and sages who were present, they realized that although they considered that Lord Balaram had not done the right thing, Lord Balaram was immediately ready to make up for it. ถึงแม้พระองค์เจ้าวารามเนี่ยอาจจะทำไปทำไปในสิ่งที่ไม่เหมาะสมแต่พระองค์เนี่ยก็พร้อมที่จะตอบแทน
So when all of the sages heard Lord Balaram speak like this, they didn't want to change anything Lord Balaram had done. They understood Lord Balaram had killed Roma Harshan Sutta because that was actually part of his mission to remove these kind of people. So the sages said to Lord Balaram, they said, yeah, it was unusual the way you killed him, that you used that kusha grass to kill him. But leave it as it is, don't change anything. So the sages said, then you, you are the Supreme Lord and you desire to kill him, so don't bring him back to life again. But they said to Lord Balaram, remember that we gave him a blessing that he could have a long life. So we gave him that blessing, you have to keep that blessing. So what should be done? They want, the sages and brahmanas, they wanted to keep the fact that they had given this blessing to Ramaharsha and Sutta, that, that, they should, that that blessing should still be there. But at the same time, they didn't want to bring him back to life. So then Lord Balaram solved the problem for them. Lord Balaram explained to them, he said, so because the, the son is produced from the body of the father. So the son is the representative of the father. So Lord Balaram says that this Ugra Shraba Sutta, this is Ugra Shraba Sutta, he is the son of Roma Harshan Sutta. So he should be given the blessing which was given to his father. <laughs> Yes, Ugra Shrava Sutta. We usually just say Sutta Goswami, but his proper name is Ugra Shrava Sutta. And he was the son of Roma Harsha. Mm. So Lord Balaram said, we will give all the blessings to 
Ugrashava Sutta to his son, and he can take his father's position and he can continue to speak on the Puranas. And Lord Balaram said to the sages, he said, you gave, him a, you gave him a blessing of a long life, so we will give that blessing to his son, and his son can have a long life. Yeah, he'll have a long life in a good and healthy body without any disturbances and full strength of all the senses. So then Lord Balaram asked to say, he said, uh, he said, all right, he said, I will give all of these blessings to the son of Ramaharshan. He said, then he asked the Brahmanas, he said, do you want any other blessings? He said, now I'm here in Naimashiranya, you can ask from me anything, any trouble, any problems, tell me and I will help you. So Lord Balaram became like an ordinary Kshatriya, because the Kshatriya, his duty is always to serve and to give protection to the people. And Lord Balaram told them also, he said, I don't know how I can atone, how I can make up for killing Romaharshan, but whatever you suggest, let me know, I'll be glad to do it. So the Brahmanas knew about Lord Balaram and his mission, and they suggested that he do the atonement in a manner which would be good for them. So then the sages told Lord Balaram that there's a very powerful demon of the name Bauvala living near here. And this Bauvala is the son of Ilvala and he visits the sacred places of sacrifice every fortnight on the full moon and moonless days. So this demon creates a lot of trouble for us in performing our duties in the sacrifice. 
มาพวกนี้มาตัวนี้เนี่ยให้ความยากลําบากกับเรามากแบบสร้างความปอกวนกับเรามากในการทําพิธีบูชา So they said to Lord Balaram, "Can you kill this demon for us?" And they said, "If you will kill this demon, that will make up, that will be your atonement for our benefit." So the demon comes here to our sacrificial arena, and he throws all kinds of contaminated stuff, contaminated things into the arena where we perform sacrifice. It's, he throws things like blood and stool and urine and wine, and he pollutes the whole place. And he and he throws these things upon. He throws some these things on us also. So after you kill this demon Bovala, then you can continue to visit the holy places. And you should continue pilgrimage for twelve months, and in that way, you will be completely freed from any contamination. So this is the end of the chapter. So next chapter we'll hear about Balaram, Balva, Balvala delivered, and Balaram tours. Okay, so we'll stop here. Are there any questions? Maybe we should just go ahead. I can't see any question, Ramesh. Yes, we can continue also. Or oh, now it's seven fifteen, Ramesh. Another ten fifteen minutes we can do. Fifteen minutes we can do. If no questions, we finish at eight thirty. Yes. Okay. All right. So Lord Balaram prepared himself to meet this great demon Balva. He waited for the time when the demon usually comes to the sacred place. Now, uh, uh, 
So just before the demon appeared, first of all, there was a great hailstorm. And the whole, the whole atmosphere became full of, the whole, the whole sky became covered with dust, and there was this horrible smell in the atmosphere. So then the, this demon Balva, Balva, began to shower torrents of stew and urine and other impure things on everyone. And then the demon himself appeared in the sacrificial arena. He appeared and he had a big trident in his hand. He was huge in size and his body was black, like a, it was like a big mass of carbon. And his hair and his beard and his moustache were all red colored like copper. And he, because of his beard, he appeared very dangerous and fierce. So when Lord Balaram saw the demon, then Lord Balaram got ready to attack him. So Lord Balaram, first of all, called for his plough and club. Lord Balaram's two weapons are that, the plough and the club. So when he called for them, they immediately appeared before him. So this demon Balva, he had mystic power and he was flying in the sky. So Lord Balaram took his plough, with the help of his plough, he dragged the demon down from the sky and brought him crashing down to earth. And then Balaram took his club and he smashed the head of the demon with his club. So when Lord Balaram did this, then the head of the demon split and a lot of blood began flowing out of his head. So the demon was screaming that this demon had disturbed all the pious brahmanas. But by Lord Balaram's power, he had fallen to the ground and now he was screaming in pain. So the demon, when he fell to the ground, it was like a great mountain had fallen on the ground. 
แต่เมื่อมาตัวนี้ล้มลงไปกับพื้นเนี่ยเหมือนกับภูเขาลูกใหญ่เนี่ยมันล้น Because the mountain is often red colored, so this demon had a red beard, so the red color was there. Okay. So that all the sages and brahmanas of Naimasharanya, they watched, they had seen Lord Balaram do this, they were very pleased to see this. And they offered their respects from prayers to Lord Balaram. And they all, all the sages all agreed that whatever Lord Balaram tries to do, it will never be a failure. And then they they give Lord Balaram a special bath. Just like the demigods bathe King Indra in heaven, when he is when he wins a victory over the demons. Then they will praise Lord Indra by giving him a special victory bath. So they wanted to praise Lord Balaram the same way. And they they praised Lord Balaram by. Uh, they get, they honored him by giving him very nice new clothing and ornaments, and they gave him a garland of lotus flowers for victory. And that this garland is very special. It's made from flowers which will never will wither or dry up. It, it's an eternal garland. So after all of this, then Lord Balaram took permission from the brahmanas. In Naimisharanya, and he went with other brahmanas. He went to the bank of the river Koshik, and took his bath there. And after taking bath there, then he went towards the river Sarayu, which is where Lord Ramachandra Ayodhya is situated. And Lord Balaram visited the source of that river. And Lord Balaram followed along the bank of the Sarayu River, then they came up to Prayag, where the Ganga meets the Yamuna. And and the Saraswati River also joins the Ganga with the Yamuna, but the Saraswati is underground. Now it's underground, but in Lord Balaram's time it was up on the ground. 
ป้ายดินและตอนสมัยก่อนนั้นมันอยู่บนดินอืม then he also took his bath there and then he worshipped in the local temples he worshipped in the temples of the different demigods And he also offered oblations to the different forefathers and sages. Then he went to the ashram of the great sage Pulaha. Then he went to the rivers, the river Gandaki and Gomati. And then he took his bath in the river Vipasha. Then he came to the Soma River. Which is in the Bihar province. And he took his bath there, and performed also Vedic rituals. Then he came to the holy city of Gaya, where there is a a very special Vishnu temple. So according to the advice of his father, Vasudev, the father of Balaram, he offered oblations to the forefathers in this Vishnu temple. Then he traveled. Then he traveled to the Ganga, where the Ganga is a delta, where it's broken into many branches. And then it flows into the sea at the Bay of Bengal. And that's that place where the Ganga flows into the sea. That's called Ganga Sagar. And there's a big festival, a big mill that takes place every year in the month of January, when thousands of people will go there. Just like people come every year to to uh, Kumbh Mela. All right. So we will stop here now. You will see such expression from her. Oh. Krishna, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj and dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances of glory to Srila Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, my question is, uh, how can we separate uh, uh, compassion from uh, sentimentality? Uh, 
แยกแยะความเข้าใจของแต่ละอย่างนั้นได้ยังไง What is that? Compassion for who? Uh, from sentimentality. Sentimental. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, yes. <laughs> you think the sages were being compassionate, were being sentimental? Uh, yes. How can we separate? Well, you have to be guided by Shastra. Sadhu, Shastra and Guru will guide you. You cannot just be guided by your own mind, your own sentimental feelings. You have to consider everything on the basis of Shastra. So Lord Balaram considered everything in terms of facts, not just sentiment. Um. เราจะรู้ได้ไงว่าสิ่งที่เราตัดสินใจในการทำอะไรลงไปเนี่ยมันไม่ใช่เป็นเป็นความคิดของเราเองแต่มันมันเป็นไปในรูปแบบที่ถูกต้องและเสนิกุณมาแล้วบอกว่าตรงนี้เนี่ยเราจะสามารถตรวจสอบตัวเราเองได้โดยการที่เราดูว่าเรายังทำตามคำแนะนำของพระเวทอยู่หรือเปล่าหรือว่าพระจังผู้เชื่อถือดัดควรที่จะรับคำแนะนำ So you have to be very careful about these things. We can become very sentimental if we're, if we're not careful. Just like you could say in some ways that the sages were being sentimental, but at the same time they, were, they just wanted to see that everything was done properly because they've given a benediction, so that benediction should be kept. เอ่อมันไม่ใช่เราจะรู้ได้มันอาจจะมันเป็นความอ่อนไหวของจิตใจหรือว่ามันเป็นมันเป็นการกระทําที่ถูกต้องแล้วเนี่ยอันนี้เนี่ยก็ต้องใช้ความเข้าใจที่ถูกต้องเพราะฉะนั้นสิ่งที่พวกพรามที่เขารู้สึกกับสิ่งที่เอ่อคนที่โดนฆ่าไปเนี่ยมันมันมันไม่ได้เป็นความผิดพลาดไปแต่อย่างไร The sages were concerned, you know, that Lord Balaram had killed, you know, the, the sages themselves, they didn't think anything was wrong, but actually Srila Prabhupada points out in the purport, there was something wrong, that actually the sages thought that, oh, they killed a brahmana, but Prabhupada points out in the purport, actually, he wasn't a brahmana. That he'd gone against the Brahminical principles, that he wasn't gentle. ตรงนี้เนี่ยบางคนก็บอกว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงสังหารบรามณะได้อย่างไรแบบนี้เนี่ยก็พยายามบอกแต่ซึ่งความจริงแล้วเนี่ยจะพระพานทรงอธิบายบอกว่าความจริงแล้วเขาเนี่ยมันไม่ได้เป็นบรามณะแล้วเพราะเขาไม่มีความสุภาพ So we have to be cautious about these things when considering situations. Everything should be done guided by sadhu, shastra, and guru. So Lord Balaram is the original guru. So he had decided that this person should be killed. Because if he's not killed, he will continue in the same way. <laughs> ของอพระองค์เจ้าวรารามว่าถ้าถ้าหรือแล้วเขาไม่ถูกสังหารเนี่ยการกระทําของเขาแบบนี้มันก็จะมันก็ถือว่าเป็นสิ่งที่คําสอนที่ไม่ดีต่อผู้อื่น So sometimes people can be very sentimental. It's very easy for us to fall into the material platform and be, feel sentimental. Oh, I feel sorry for poor Rom Maharshan. 
อันนี้เนี่ยก็อาจจะเกิดขึ้นกับเราได้เนี่ยบางครั้งเราก็บางคนเนี่ยก็มันอาจจะเกิดความอ่อนไหวของจิตใจทําให้ทํากระทําบางสิ่งบางอย่างลงไปอะไรตรงนี้เราก็ต้องคอยระมัดระวัง Anyway you can see the sages were not sentimental because they understood they said Lord Balaram's decided to kill him but leave it that we we don't want to change it We don't want to change, do anything against the desire of the supreme lord. เพราะว่าเขาเขาไม่ได้เป็นเอ่อมันไม่ได้เกิดขึ้นจากความอ่อนไหวทางอารมณ์ในในกรณีนี้ที่เราเห็นได้อันนี้เนี่ยเราเห
I was just wondering. Mm -hmm. y yes, I think it was, it's mentioned here that they wanted Lord Balaram, they understood that Lord Balaram being the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he was independent and he could do as he liked, but they were concerned that it, 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 they don't want to create the wrong impression for ordinary people because ordinary people may think, well, Lord Balaram did this, so I could do that. So that's why they said that Lord Balaram, that you should atone for what you've done. And he did, that's, and he, Lord Balaram immediately under, ag agreed that, that he wanted to show the example for common people that if you do such a thing, then you have to atone for it. And you see that example of atonement, just like Parasaram, Parasaram, who had killed the Kshatriya race so many times, he also underwent great austerities and atonement. And then you see also even Indra, he killed the great devotee Vritasura, who was in the body of a demon. Indra killed him. He had to do atonement for killing that person. So yes, the, the example is there to perform atonement. It's important that people need to, they need to know that, that, that you, if you do something like this, you have to atone for it. เพราะฉะนั้นในเนี่ยเป็นการแสดงให้เห็นถึงการที่ว่าเอ่อถ้าเกิดว่าการทําผิดไปหรือว่าแบบถ้าใครหรือสังหารใครผิดมีตัวอ
So the mother is really critical in the hospital. So she's just left Penang and she's gone to Kuala Lumpur to see the mother. Oh my goodness. She's just yeah, she's seeking all the de- your, your prayers and the devotees' prayers also. Yes, certainly. We'll pray for her. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, so on that unfortunate note, we'll end the class here. Thank you, Archana, for translating and hosting. And thank all the devotees for participation. And pray you will all stay safe and healthy. Please take care. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Guru Thank you, Archana. Thank you, Guru